Here we have my top 5 most fun and broken builds in Lords of the Fallen. But these builds consist of weapons and gear that you can obtain well before the end of the game. So we can get you clapping them cheeks as soon as possible. Alrighty then, well let's jump right in to build number 5. The Infernal Vampire. See, this is the perfect build for progression, moving forward and fighting off mobs because of the self-healing effects that we will have. The star of the show is the Bloodlust Sword. It deals fire damage, scaling solely with Inferno, and it looks freaking sick. Plus, it procs both bleed and burn, which is a deadly combination. Though what makes this weapon truly special is its unique ability in that it restores health upon kill. Oh yeah, baby. This is what I will be focusing on, using other other items and gear to increase and stack upon this health restoration ability in order to create a full-on vampire lifesteal build. The easiest weapon to combine here for a power stance is the Raw Mangler Axe, as this Mangler Axe is very easy to obtain early on, and it deals fire damage, inflicts burn, and also scales with Inferno. But later on you will obtain the Enchantress Flail weapon, which will also synergize well with this build, so either one is good, but that's not all. We can even further increase our self-healing abilities by first of all, adding the Rune to receive health upon kill, and also by using using this Ring of Nourishment for even more health on kill. We now have three different sources of self-healing per every kill. I mean, the math on this turns out to be exactly 35 health per kill, which doesn't seem like a lot. But I mean, if you get three, four, or five of these dudes, it can add up and maybe save your ass. That's why this build is perfect for progressing forward, moving through mobs of enemies while keeping your health bar topped off for extended periods of time. Considering this is an Inferno build, obviously we have spells. I mean, I personally really like these two buff spells. Activate them real quick, boom boom, and then hop into battle. And of course, you always keep a simple ranged spell. The Ring of Night's Fire can be found quite early in the game. With this, if you're facing a tough opponent like a boss, throwing on Wither Salts will be extremely effective, considering this ring is boosting both fire and wither damage. Yeah man, this build is the bee's knees, boy. By the way, quick shout out, thank you Dungeon Hunter 6 for sponsoring this video and helping me pay my car bill this month. This highly anticipated addition to the Dungeon Hunter franchise is a free to play mobile RPG with fast paced hack and slash combat where you take on giant boss fights. But this game has a very unique game mechanic in that after defeating a boss, you are then able to dominate that boss, allowing you to mount or fly them and even summon them up to serve you on the battlefield. This is a freaking sick game mechanic that I have never seen in this type of game before and it is absolutely free to play. Download it right now using my link in the description or use your phone to scan the QR code on the screen if you're viewing on a PC. There's over a hundred uniquely designed bosses to conquer with new classes and units updated every single month providing an endless amount of fun. Dungeon Hunter 6 takes 3D graphics to the next level baby. I mean this is one of the best visual experiences that you're gonna get on a mobile device. You can even play Play this game with friends and battle in real time guild wars. You can try it out right now for free on both Android and iOS by using my link that you can find in the description. Or scan the QR code if you're viewing on a computer. So do yourself a favor and download this game on your phone today. But do not wait because by downloading right now with my links, they will give you a free starter pack worth $50 consisting of 10 summoning scrolls, 1 accessory pack, and 1 demonic wolf. Plus, you can use your in-game account to enter in for a legitimate chance at winning insane prizes like an iPhone 15 or a PS5. More info on all of that is in the description below, so go ahead man and check it out. Moving forward, the Slithering Assassin. Here, we use in Poison and Bleed as the main tools. Mostly an agility build with a bit of strength. Now, I'm not gonna lie, man, this is not the most super overpowered build of all time, but it's definitely worth using in the early to middle part of the game. We got the Shuja Warrior Spear and the Kuka Jin Sword, procking both Poison and Bleed. One of the main cornerstones of this build is the Bloodbane Ring. Inflicting Poison also inflicts Bleed. Ooh. 
Ooh, I'm being invaded. All right, all right, this is great. This is perfect opportunity to show how poison is effective against enemies with larger health pools. All right, what you got, my boy? What you got? What you got? Bring it on now. You're inflicting so much poison, which means you're also inflicting a ridiculous amount of bleed. And remember, bleed deals a burst of damage, but it also increases any physical damage of your following attacks. Yeah, that poison is definitely eating him alive, man. He's trying to run for it. Why are you running? Why are you running? Yeah, that's what you get. Through heaven and earth, I alone am the honored one. So as you can see, using a proper bow is a very strong addition to this build. Obviously, I recommend you use poison arrows if you got them. Pretty much everything we need for this build can be found right here in this swamp area. The Kukajin sword is found right over here. There will be a lady frozen in stone trying to sing out to you. And you are supposed to use a healing spell on her, like a civilized person, and save her. But me, my dumbass, my first instinct is just to immediately start chucking fireballs at her. And yeah, I killed her, though at least I was able to get the sword. Then the Shuja warrior spear will eventually drop after murdering a bunch of these Shuja warriors warriors here that are just, you know, minding their own business. Also, poison salts will be dropping here like flies, and using salts can give a huge increase in effectiveness for procking poison. Using this setup with poison salts enhancement, you can easily kill a boss. The status buildup necklace, Pendant of Burden, obviously pairs up perfectly with this build also. I like this setup with the spear in your main hand because this way we can switch from a power stance to two-handing the spear if we feel like we need to. I mean, I just like that poking move set. Get back. Back up, you foul beast. Get back. Number three, Heretic Necromancer, aka the Lord of Bubbles. A Radiance and Inferno hybrid spellcaster, capitalizing on all the super cool umbral spells that this game offers. And by the time you hit about the 15 to 20 hour mark, you will have access to plenty of umbral spells. You can go to Molhi, the magical Humpty Dumpty, and buy all types of umbral spells directly from him, or from the boss remembrances that you may have. First of all, I highly recommend the Putrid Javelin. Now, I'm not sure why, but this is dope and it deals massive damage for a somewhat low mana cost. But overall, which spells you want to be using really depends on the situation. You got something like Painful Echo, which is great for mobs because it can chain through enemies very well. But then you got spells like Diminishing Missile, which are great against single targets, but would be a waste against smaller fodder enemies. So choose wisely. Though of course, you shall always need the spam spell. No 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 spam spell. Something low cost and fast that you can spam away at everything. This build is primarily a spellcaster, because I'm not gonna lie, like as far as actual umbral weapons go, you are shit out of luck for at least the first half of the game. There are some very strong umbral weapons that could be like the Veil Piercer, the Nohuda Polearm, the Putrid Child Sword, but again, those are all weapons that you're not gonna find until like around the snow area. So in the meantime, you can use whatever you got that deals wither damage, such as the Saint Latimer's Relic Spear, which you can get from the Congregating Sack of Doodoo Boss Remembrance. There's also the Blacksmith Pride, the Taxidermist Hammer, yeah, you get the idea. Wither Damage. The main point here is the fact that the game does give you a ton of Umbral spells early on. They are quite powerful, they're looking really cool, and they're fun to use. To be honest, I feel like they made Umbral weapons few and far between on purpose, considering they made several Umbral spells that are just mimicry of weapons, such as this Blood Harvest, the Pestilence Blade, and the Umbral Slash. Though, in my opinion, they're not that great. <laughs> Number 2, the Immortal Angel. This is your Get OP Early Radiance build. Every single Radiance build I've seen always uses a Pieta Sword and a Shield. So one big way my build will distinguish itself is by dual wielding instead. Now I believe power stancing makes a big difference here as I will explain later. 
Though my build will be using Pieta's sword. I mean, come on, man. Look at this freaking thing. This sword has immediately become a fan favorite, being solidified as one of, if not the strongest Radiance weapon. Especially considering you can obtain it fairly early in the game. I mean, is it just me, or does it seem like the game just really blesses you up with all types of Radiance weapons and spells? Not even like halfway through the game, a Radiance build can already become extremely strong. Meanwhile, it's basically the goddamn opposite for inferno builds i've been using the same four inferno spells throughout the entire fucking game <clears throat> sorry about that so as i said before this build will be power stancing two holy weapons now the reason for this is because the smite status effect is a huge part of making a holy build very deadly as smite increases all holy type damage so we want to be procking smite as often as possible and dual wielding will help with that as it seems power stancing two weapons is typically more effective for procking passive effects compared to just using one single weapon so a good weapon to use with our power stance is the orient preacher hammer since you can obtain this hammer pretty easily though the problem is it doesn't come with innate smite so we are gonna have to be using smite salts fairly often but i mean come on man don't be a fucking cheapskate they're only 300 a pop and they last you a while so we obviously have a ton of Radiant spells. In my opinion, one of, if not the best Radiant spells is Aureus's Judgment. Of course, of course. Mostly because of its tracking. Other spells, like this sword attack, basically just fucks off or wherever it feels like going. But you cast Aureus Judgment, and that lightning stays glued on that fat boy like a simp on TikTok. I'm bad, and that's good. Never be good, and that's not bad. There's no one I'd rather be than me. Though some spells I'd say are essential to this build are the healing spells, such as Healing Radiance and Invigorating Aura, because when you combine these spells with other healing items like the Bramble Ring, healing you when procking Smite, and Queen Verena's Ring for even more health regeneration, that combination is how we get this Immortal Angel vibe. With the Queen's Ring and Invigorating Aura both active, look how fast we are healing ourselves, man, that's, that's beast. The Empyrean Grenade's throwable decreases holy resistance, so if you're up against a big boy, you can start the fight by switching over and chucking one of these grenades at him, simply for the increase in holy damage. Then switch back to your catalyst and begin the fight. Now with this build, you're gonna want as much mana as possible, so we are going to be using a bunch of these mana stone clusters, and like I said before, you're gonna want a solid supply of smite salt as well. So yeah, this build is gonna be using a bunch of consumables. Moving on to our final build. You fellas know I gotta do this video justice by ending it off with a strength build. Wielding the Sword of Teeth and Flesh. Wait, 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 no, no, that's not right. That's, uh, oh, skin and tooth, oh, all right. Sword of Skin and Tooth, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. This is an iconic weapon. This bad boy can be found in the Fire Town, which isn't too far into the game, and yet it is certainly one of the best weapons in the game. A pure, beefy strength scaling with 200 burn? Sheesh, bro. This is devastating against larger enemies. Like, even though this dude apparently has a decent resistance to fire damage, I'm still pooping on him a little bit. I mean, that, that burn damage chipping away nicely. So this is very simple, mainly strength, yet with some Inferno, like 20 or so levels of Inferno so that we can still use fire spells. Because for melee builds like this, I love using both these two buff spells together. The increased defense and increased damage. Just boom, boom, and you buffed up, baby. Plus, for some reason, the Magma Surge seems to synergize very well with this build's playstyle. By the way, I got a tip for you for the Magma Surge. Sometimes it's best not to lock on to enemies when using this. Just aim it towards the ground and cast off a few shots. This will flood the floor and most likely get good damage in. So I recommend you just hold on to one of the smallest, lightest shields that you got. Merely to add runes. Just like this. Because even when you're not actually wielding the shield, you still gain any rune effects you have equipped. 
Also, because of the Ring of Night's Fire, I do like tossing on some Wither Salt here for that juicy extra damage. And yeah, that's really all there is to it, man. It's quite simple. So what do you think of these builds? Are you already using something similar? Or do you have a better, superior version of any of these builds? Leave a comment with your opinion and join the conversation down below. Thank you for watching, my fellow jabronis. I will talk to you later.